So you know me, not a huge fan of AI, but I gotta tell you, the Photoshop Nero filter that colorizes black and white images is actually pretty impressive, and it's almost close to perfect, but it needs a little bit of help to push it over the edge. So I'm gonna take this headshot of myself, which is only in black and white, and I'm going to make it a color image. So let's go ahead and start this off, and then I'll tell you the backstory as we go along here. I'm gonna press Command or Control J on my background image. Always wanna work on a duplicate copy before I uh, go into any filter program in Photoshop. Now when I've got this layer selected, I'm gonna to go to Filter, and I'm gonna to go to Nero Filters, okay? So in the Nero Filters section, you're gonna see this right here where it says Colorize. Now you might need to download this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and press the download button and let Photoshop do its thing. So the backstory behind this, my buddy Dave Cross is hosting the Photoshop Virtual Summit version three. And I'm honored to be one of the many instructors that is going to be delivering some world-class content. So Dave asked me, can you send me a headshot? I said, sure thing. I sent him my black and white headshot. He goes, is there any way you can send me a color headshot? And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> this headshot is a headshot that I got from Creative Live. They only sent me a black and white version of it. Beautiful headshot. Thank you so much, Creative Live, for this. But I need a color version of it. So after installing this, I got an error message here. It says, incompatible image color mode. Convert from grayscale to RGB. Okay, I think we can handle that. I'm going to press this arrow up here. We need this to be in RGB because we need to work with a color image. Now, that might seem counterproductive because this image is black and white. When this image came into Photoshop, its ICC profile was grayscale mode. So we need to convert that to RGB mode. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to where it says image, mode, and then right here, it's going to say grayscale. We need to change that to RGB color. Okay? Don't need to merge anything. We're good to go. So. After we have the RGB mode selected for this image, let's go up to filter and go back into our neural filters. In our neural filters, I'm just going to go straight down into colorize and turn the toggle on and see what Photoshop gives us. Now, I think it does a pretty darn good job here with our black and white image converted to a color image right off the bat. So much so that I don't really need to do too much work with these adjustments here. And actually, I don't really care too much for these adjustments here. I just need this as the base and I can build the rest of it myself in Photoshop itself. Now, let's talk about these, though. The scene. When we move these to the left and to the right, that is going to adjust the overall scene of the image. Okay. Uh, when we move these to, these are going to give us more blue, maybe even more yellow in the image. Um, and adjust accordingly. Now, I think it looks pretty good with a little bit more blue in there, so we actually will go that way with that. Now, does it need more magenta or more green? Now, I would suggest you move these sliders very slow to see what more colors it's going to need. Now, there is something on here called focal points where you can click around and make certain things different colors. And I don't really think that they're that helpful to begin with, and quite honestly, they're broken right now in my version of Photoshop. So there's really no need to show you the focal points there. Um, we get into saturation. You can actually increase the saturation of the overall color that's in the image, but we also know we can do that in Photoshop itself. Since we're already in Photoshop, we don't necessarily need to do it here, but if we do, it looks pretty good. Might give us a better base of color to start from, okay? Uh, reduce color artifacts. We can see if that's going to help us at all with this, and I don't think it really is. It's probably going to be reducing any of your saturation artifacts that you might get. So with that, I'm actually just going to go ahead and be okay with this. I'm fine with it the way it is right now. I'll go into Photoshop, and I'll do the rest of the things that I need to do. So let me go ahead and close that out and then open it up again and press OK. Now, it looks like it's automatically going to export this out as a new layer for me, so that's cool. Now, what I want you to see here, though, is that what this Nero filter does and why it's not the most perfect thing right off the bat is let's see what it's doing here. It's actually taking a look at the image and giving it the colors that it thinks it needs in various different places. But if we turn off the layers below, look at the image. I mean, there's things missing in my head. There's basically colors missing in my head. There's colors missing in my chin. There's even some color missing in that background area, which really isn't that big of a deal. We just need to fix it. So how can we fix this? Well, let's turn these off again so we can see this. What I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna click on this layer, make a new layer, and press B for my brush tool. And then I'm going to select this color right here by pressing Alt or Option after I have my brush tool. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and just paint right on top of this layer uh, over here with this blue color, okay? 
uh, fill in those blanks here. I can make this a brush that's gonna work a little bit faster also. So let me make that a little bit smaller here and just brush this in, okay? And I'll brush this in back here and I'll even brush it in over here like this, okay? Now, let me go ahead and turn these layers back on and see what's happening here. Let me go ahead and this layer here, we're gonna use the color from this on our image. So let's just change this to the color blend mode. So the luminosity of the black and white images below appears underneath it. Now it looks a lot better, doesn't it? Okay, so now we'll brush a little bit over here as well and get that fixed up. Okay, if I brush on my uh, shirt there, it's really not that big of a deal, but you can brush around, brush around and fix all that up and it looks pretty darn good. Uh, but it's kind of dull at the same time. So let me do this. Let me actually make a selection for my face here. I'm gonna go down to this layer here, go to select, and then I'm gonna go to uh, subject, select subject. With select subject here, I'm actually gonna grab my quick selection tool as well and get this little portion of my ear in there. Okay, that definitely needs to be in there because it's my ear and a little bit of this portion of my head over there as well. Okay. Now I can go into almost any selection tool and refine the selection. So I'm gonna press MM for the marquee tool and go to select and mask. Now, once I'm in select and mask, I'm just gonna go ahead and select the smart radius, move my radius up a slight bit, and then increase that contrast just a little bit to get rid of that fuzzy edge that we have on there and I'll press okay. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm creating a background color for this uh, black and white image here. So I'll turn these layers back on because that's what I'm going to be working with. And then at the top of this layer stack, I'm going to add a color overlay, a solid color overlay. Now what you'll see, this solid color overlay filled in me. I want it to be the background. That's okay. I used me to select the subject. I'll just press Command or Control I to invert the mask. So now you can see that this color that I'm going to put in the background, it's a solid color fill. I'll double click it. And now I'll make this F64 Academy Blue, which is 2489C and three, and then press okay. Now, change the blend mode to something like soft light and look at that, looks awesome. I'll drop the opacity a little bit on there as well. So we're getting to a point where I can almost use this uh, for Dave here to uh, <laughs> to put up on the website for the uh, Photoshop Virtual Summit. But there's a couple other things I wanna do here. Now, if you look at my teeth, they are extremely red and it, they should not look like that at all. So I'm gonna add an HSL adjustment layer here. I'm gonna make the HSL adjustment, click on the targeted adjustment tool, click on that color red, and then drop the saturation a little bit and increase the whiteness just a little bit. Okay, now my teeth probably aren't even that white anyway, but whatever, we'll just go with that. Maybe we can make them a little bit more yellow to make it a little bit more realistic. Drop that saturation a little bit. You definitely don't want them like this, okay? That's not how white we want those teeth. So now I'm going to make them uh, on this mask. I'm going to press Command Control I, and then I'm going to brush. Here's my brush tool. I'm going to brush with white to bring that selection back. I inverted it just to make that selection for the teeth there. Now, this is probably going to look extremely unnatural when I do this, and that's okay, okay? Because we can just take the opacity here and just drop it until it starts to look like it's acceptable. And that's looking pretty good. But there's some things that we need to fix here. Remember I said this about my face not having some color in it that it needed to have in it? Well, we're going to do the same thing that we did with this layer right here, but we're going to do it for those skin tones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer on top of this. I'm going to press B for my brush tool, and then I'll click, select the color overlay here and select the actual color of the skin next to the areas that were not working. Like this will be good right here. Okay, because what I'm also gonna do here is after I brush this on, I'm gonna change the blend mode and it'll all just blend beautifully together. So I'll just paint this on. It doesn't have to be a perfect color, okay? You probably even use the color overlay for this as well if you'd like. And then brush it on those areas where it did not get that selection made very well. Okay, I'll even brush it here and under here, okay? Again, doesn't have to be perfect. So what we're gonna do here is just change the blend mode to something like color, okay? And that, that way, that color will fill in those spots and allow the luminosity to remain the same because we want that lightness to remain the same under there. But the luminance value, the luminance value remains the same and we just get that color. So let me alter option, click this color here and I'll brush in over here on the top of the forehead. Maybe make that a little bit on that. If it gets like 
like this color right here looks a little bit too pink. I'll just click on that color, move it up. Like I said, this Nero filter is a good start, but it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, and that looks pretty good, but let's make this a little bit smaller here. This brush a little bit smaller. And we'll brush in down here on the neck as well, right in this area. Alter option, click the color that's right next to that, and then brush into that neck area where I'm missing some of that color there as well. All right, so my face is looking good, I think. I don't know, you can be the judge of that, but like I said, the Nero filter is a good start. Okay, so if we go back to this here, that's a good start, but we need to do some work in order to make it a little bit better. Looking at my um, cardigan here that I was wearing, I like the Cardi Hardy. We are going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer. We're gonna click on the target adjustment tool and click on that color. Now I'm gonna reduce the saturation on this color a little bit and actually move the hue of this color a little bit more over to where the yellows would be. Okay, so right about here, drop that saturation. It is a cream colored cardigan and then bring the luminance or lightness up a little bit so it's a little bit brighter. Now again, same thing, command or control I to invert that B for my brush tool, make my brush a little bit bigger and then I'm gonna brush in with white where I want that to come back. Okay, and then I can fix this up later. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect right now. The color, I mean, does not have to be perfect at this point because I will fix that up in a second here. We'll just brush along this edge. If we go over spray a little bit, that's okay. We'll, we're gonna end up making a uh, smaller brush for this and we'll just switch over to black when we are ready to take some things off that we didn't want to paint that much in. Okay, so. Make it a little bit bigger and brush over here. Go right to the edge of that cardigan. I said I cardi hardy, man. My little sister makes fun of me all the time for it. Whatever. I don't care. I don't care. Love my cardigans. Okay. Now, that looks awfully yellow now after we see it with all the rest of the colors. So let's click on that HSL adjustment layer. We'll click on that color and we'll bring the saturation down just a little bit more like that, okay? And then maybe bring that lightness up even more. Eh, actually, bringing the lightness down actually looks pretty good too. And then there's our before and there's our after. Now we did overspray a little bit here. Like I said, we can make uh, our black brush now to brush in very, very ever so closely to that where it's kind of turning green over there where those two things are combining. And that looks better. Now. The last thing I want to do is I want to change the color of my shirt. So I'm going to make an HSL adjustment layer on here again. I'm going to click on that color, which is going to be the blues. And I'm going to change that blue to a reddish color. I like it. Oh, look at that. Because I think I actually was wearing a red shirt that day. I usually do wear a red shirt under that specific cardigan. Increase the saturation a little bit and we'll be good to go. Press command and control I and then brush on here with white to bring that color back. Man, we are getting somewhere, aren't we? Now, the Nero filter, like I said, good start, right? Good start. I brushed a little bit too much there. Let me get my um, brush here and just brush a little bit here. I need to get, I need to stop putting so much pressure on when I get close to those edges. But if I do overspray, it's okay. I can just flip it back over and brush it black. Okay, that's good. Neo filter is a good start, but man, it does need some work if you want to make it look really good. Okay. So now I'll zoom out a little bit because I look really big there. Now let's look at the before and the after. So here's our before with our black and white image. Here's after with the Nero filter. It was missing a lot of this portion on this side. Uh, kind of got a bluish color on my uh, cardigan here. Mismatched coloring on my face. So yes, AI is it's a good start, but you need to do some more work with it. Paint in that background there, make it a little bit better. Paint in some of that facial feature, make that a little bit better. Add that beautiful blue background there that just blends so well because we use the soft light blend mode to do that. HSL adjustment layer to change the cardigan color. HSL adjustment layer to change my teeth color because they were awfully red. And then an HSL adjustment layer for the shirt. What I wanted to get at with this is just to show you that the Nero filters in Photoshop can be a great starting point for your images, but they are not the end all be all and they are going to need some work. So when you pull them in there, don't just think that you're gonna get the perfect color on your black and white image. Now in the Photoshop Virtual Summit, which I'll post a link below, also be at the end of this video, I'm teaching, ironically, 
black and white conversions, how to make color images go to black and white, and also a new rendition of how I use Blendif in my workflow. So if you want to join me and many other phenomenal Photoshop instructors for some world-class education, head to the Photoshop Virtual Summit from October 4th through the 8th. Now, this is a time-sensitive thing. So if you're watching this tutorial in December of 2021, you're not gonna be able to access it. So make sure you click on the link below or at the end of this video to get more information about the Photoshop Virtual Summit number three. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. I like to take hard things in Photoshop and make them pretty easy. So if you haven't considered subscribing, why not take the time to do it today?